We have that applies to us is going to be we have patients constantly in the field that we come across that have uh, cardiac problems, they have a problem with their pump, they may have respiratory problems, and in order to maintain an acid base balance where well, we've got those electrolytes just sitting just so, so we can uh, have a good body environment, we have to actually look further down in, in detail as to what goes on at the acid base balance level. So the definition of acid base balance the body must maintain a concentration of hydrogen ions within strict limits for cells to function at their best. Even slight deviations from the normal amount can result in serious problems and even death. The term pH is used to express the hydrogen ion concentration in the fluid. Great. So why do we care about this as paramedics? We care about this because this whole thing affects specifically um, when our cells Remember, our, way back when we were talking about our cells have to survive basically almost like a human being does. You need fuel, you need oxygen, um, and other nutrients in order for that, felt, that cell to function adequately. When that is a problem, i.e. during anaerobic metabolism, the cell, the cell still functions for a while, but only for a brief period of time before waste products uh, continually build up and pyruvic acid, lactic acid, so on and so forth. Quick little history of pH. In 1909, um, Dr. Soren, Peter Sorensen, started using the term pH. H stands for hydrogen, the lightest element. pH is the measurement of hydrogen, which determines whether a substance is an acid or a base or an alkaline. Hydrogen weighs uh, like seven zeros uh, after the decimal. Uh, to make it simpler, the weight it was changed to 10. Uh, to 7 and then the 10 was dropped, thus 7 is considered a neutral pH. pH of 7 is neutral, pH above 7.0 is alkaline, also called a base. The litmus paper, if you're testing via that means, is going to stay blue. When the pH is below 7.0, the fluid is considered acidic. The litmus paper will go from blue to red. Hydrogen is a form of acid, thus more hydrogen means a lower pH and vice versa. And those are just some generic pH values. Hydrochloric acid is a zero, so that is considered what? Acidic. Acidic. Great. Good. Um, other cleaner is a 13, so that's very what? Good. Some of the body fluids, gastric juices, between one and a three. Um, arterial blood, 7.38, 7.42, so on and so forth. Blood pH. Your normal blood pH that you need to know is between 7.35 and 7.45. Thus, the blood is normally in a state of alkalosis. A pH below 7.35 is acidic. pH above 7.45 alkalotic. Okay, so if the pH of arterial blood, blood drops below 6.8 or rises to 8.0 for more than a few hours, the person usually cannot survive. This is why and how it relates to us and our, our aspects. If somebody's been down for a long time, what is the drug that we're going to give them? Sodium bicarb. Good, sodium bicarb, right? Because we want to go ahead and try to get a little bit more of a balance, give that person a chance to survive. Lines of defense. Body has three principal lines of defense to maintain the 20 base to one acid ratio, and these are called our buffer systems. Carbonic acid buffer system respiratory and our renal. It's a quick little graph on that. Carbonic acid buffer system is the body's most important buffer. It is the fastest and works within a fraction of a second. Buffer is like a chemical sponge that will soak up all the um, or release hydrogen ions when necessary. Carbonic acid is considered a weak acid that constantly breaks down and transforms into water and car carbon dioxide. Or in hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Carbonic acid is in the middle of both of the above equations and thus you might see it actually on a test in that format. The direction in which the reaction proceeds depends uh, on the equation, depends in part on what substance is in access. So if you've got uh, too much, uh, your CO2 produces carbonic acid, which becomes hydrogen and bicarb. Another example can be when the hydrogen is in excess, like in diabetic ketoacidosis. 
Uh, the equation will move over to the left and carbon uh, acid will be moved and converted into carbon dioxide, which is obviously an acid, to be exhaled. Your respiratory system. This is going to be a big one for us because we can definitely affect this in the field. Acts as a backup to the acid base regulation. It's the second fastest mechanism working within just a couple of minutes. Respiratory system. Increased blood levels of CO2 or hydrogen stimulate the respiratory center in the brain stem, which in turn issues orders to the lungs to increase the rate and depth of respiration. So you're going to have an increase in minute volume when that occurs. When CO2 and hydrogen return to normal, your breathing will return to normal. Renal system. Third line of defense is also the slowest, taking several hours to days to operate. Renal regulation is important chiefly in the long-term maintenance of acid-base balance. Kidneys play their role by excreting excess uh, hydrogen and bicarbonate ions. If hydrogen is in excess, then it is excreted and vice versa. So let's talk about those four acid-base balance or disorders. Respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis. And if you recall, way back when we had discussed this earlier, um, we can affect a couple of these in different ways negatively and, and both positively. We'll talk about that here in a second. We talk about respiratory acidosis, that's a condition that hampers ventilation, may result in the retention of CO2. Why? You're not exhaling. Yeah. You're not exhaling, right? You're not getting it out. Good. It's called acidosis because the pH will fall. It's called respiratory acidosis because the system failed to maintain adequate minute volume. Oh, okay, well what does that mean? That means that it's acidotic, right, because we've got a buildup of all this nasty stuff, and it's respiratory because it was the respiratory system that was the cause of retention of all that stuff. Make sense? Respiratory acidosis. Whenever there's a disturbance in the acid-base balance, the body will try to compensate. Buffer system will produce hydrogen and bicarb. Renal system will excrete uh, the hydrogen. But remember, in an acute situation, that's going to take a long time in order to occur. However, the respiratory system cannot compensate and needs us to sol solve the problem. So if somebody's not breathing adequately, obviously we need to go ahead and innovate them, maybe bag them for a little bit, so on and so forth. Give them some high flow O2. Respiratory alkalosis. The problem is the opposite of respiratory acidosis. CO2 is excessively eliminated. Who can tell me under what conditions we might see that? If I show a hand. Amy? Hyperventilation. Yeah, hyperventilation, right? We're blowing too fast and too hard. We're blowing off too much. We need a balance. Good. <clears throat> Respiratory alkalosis. Compensation comes from the kidneys by retaining acid, hydrogen, eliminating alkaline. Again, since the problem is the respiratory system, the lungs cannot participate in this compensation unless, of course, being intervened by us. And that's basically what I just said. So if the lungs are the problem, then that's what we need to go ahead and correct. Metabolic acidosis occurs when the body produces an excess of acid or when acids are ingested. The acids are poured into the extracellular fluid, consume some of the bicarbonate, and then there is an increase in acid and a decrease in alkaline. Immediate compensation occurs through the lungs by increasing the rate and depth of the respirations to blow off that CO2. Treatment is aimed at eliminating the cause of the metabolic acidosis and possibly the administration of sodium bicarb. But as we'll see in a second, overly aggressive physicians, overly aggressive paramedics can negatively affect this as well. Metabolic alkalosis continued. It comes mainly from the administration of sodium bicarb by the patient. MD, or the paramedic. Lungs attempt to compensate by slightly decreasing the rate and depth in order to retain that CO2. Kidneys will eliminate um, all the nastiness uh, and retain hydrogen. Patient might need dialysis in this instance. 
So, some of the lab values that we might need to know are the pH, PCO2, partial pressure of O2, and HCO3. You are going to see these as you're transporting your patient from one hospital to another. You're going to actually, if you, if you take the time to look at the transfer paperwork, you're going to see some of these lab values. It might actually give you a, an idea as to what's going on with your patient. With your pH, once again, it's normally 7.35 to 7.45. So where does our body normally sit? Are we acidotic or alkalonic? pH less than 7.35 is acidosis. Above that, above 7.45 is a base. PCO2 is normally 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury or tor in the arterial blood. If that is below 35, then this represents alkalosis. The PCO2 is above 45, then it's acidosis. So remember, it's kind of reversed from the pH. Think of carbon dioxide as a form of acid. Partial pressure of O2, normally 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury in arterial blood. If PO2 falls below 80, then it is considered acidic. Sodium bicarb, 22 to 26 milliequivalents per liter. If it falls below 22, it's acidic. Above 26, represents alkalosis. So all of our roads lead to Rome. Respiratory, if the pH and the PCO2 are the same problem. So if you have a problem, if your lab values are off from your pH and they're off from your PCO2, what does that mean? It's respiratory, good. It's metabolic if only your pH is the problem. So right there, that's half of your diagnosis, or that's half of what you understand what's going on. So let's go ahead and interpret some quick blood gases here. Uh, let me see who I can call on. Tim Hickey, you have a pH of 7.25 and a PCO2 of 60. So let's go ahead and break this down. Is your pH normal? No. Okay, what about your PCO2? Is that normal? No. Okay, so what are we going to call this? Respiratory. Respiratory what? Respiratory acidosis. Well done. Next. Oops. Nobody saw that, right? <laughs> we got Stolly. We've got a pH of 7.5 and a PCO2 of 35. What are we talking about there? Is our 7.5, is that normal? No. What about our PCO2, is that normal? No. It's not? Well, PCO2, yes. Okay, so you're saying our pH is normal, right? Within our normal range? Right. And, uh, or it's not, actually. And our PCO2 is normal. Right. So what is this? Metabolic acid. Alkalosis. Why is it alkalosis? That's the uh, point for Just the pH. There you go. All right, um, Ryan Krishak. Respiratory alkalosis. Tell me why. <laughs> Tell me why. Because it's basic on both ends. It's above 7.35, 7.45, and below the uh, 35 to 45. You, sir, are a rock star. <laughs> he, knows. he does know it, doesn't he? Um, Chad Feller, old man, pH of 7.28, PCO2 of 38. Uh, Come on, work it out for me, brother. <laughs> you can say you don't now. I don't because I haven't fainted too much. Nate. Metabolic acidosis. Tell me why. Because the PCO2 is normal and the pH is below. Well done. <laughs> So what is the purpose of acid-base balance? Why, why, why do we need to interpret this in a classroom or in a uh, clinical setting? <coughs> Tim Hickey. It can help uh, figure out what's wrong with our patient. Well, give me some conditions that, that might be important for us to know these, these lab values. 
Hyperventilating, shortness okay. of breath. Maybe. Shortness of breath. Maybe. Secondary to what? Stevie. You know, I guess in a cardiac arrest, you need to know the uh, CO2 range. Okay, well, cardiac arrest is going to be your ultimate acid-based imbalance, right? What about what about something else that maybe is not so? This is Ken Zaro. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis. What else? Septicemia. Septicemia. Certainly. What else? Crush injury. Crush injury. You betcha. Definitely a crush injury. What else? Come on. This is good. What else? COPD. CHF. Big one. Huge one. Good. COPD. Yeah. These are all good. So we need to understand the whole point of this is why, you know, hey, we're not doctors, right? We go out there, we put band-aids on people, we'll start a line, give them some fluids, that's our job. The reason why this is important is if we have an idea that their, um, their acid-based balance is going to get all out of whack based upon their condition, which is going to be based upon our assessment, our good assessment in the field. And we may or may not be able to fix that acid-based balance, but ultimately, we might be able to take the hospital down the proper road so they can receive proper care. Any questions? Okay, thank you.